Hello friends, it's Shan here with another highly requested video for new golfers. Today, I am going to introduce essential golf words or terminology you need to know. Maybe you are new to golf yourself, maybe your partner, coworker, boss can't shut up about golf, maybe you want to join in the conversation. This video is for you. To all my friends who actually think I have a lot of tea time, let me explain. This video will be divided into the following categories. I don't know the word history behind why we use such weird terminology like the obsession with birds, but I am going to share with you all the basic terms you need to know to start talking or to start golfing today. Let's get started with the first category, which is going to be golf course. The golf course is where you will play golf. Different sports have different names for the field that they use. Sometimes it's a field, it's a court, but for for golf, it's a course. To get on the golf course, you will have to book a tea time. A tea time is not where we gather around and drink tea. It is essentially a reservation for you to play golf at a specific golf course at a given time. So generally, you can book via phone call or online for a time slot that is available, and you can generally book up to four people for a group called a foursome. Without context, that sounds really sus. After you've gotten your tea time, you will show up to the golf course on the day and first you will check in at the clubhouse. Inside the clubhouse, there will be a pro shop. Let me explain. The clubhouse is generally the house or giant estate looking thing at the golf course. This is where you check in. There might be a restaurant there. There might be other services available. Within the clubhouse, you should look for the pro shop. There will generally be signs for the pro shop. This is where they will sell golf merchandise like branded golf balls, t-shirts, or whatever else, maybe some golf clubs. This is also where you will check in for your golf round. Now that you've checked in at the pro shop, you might want to warm up before your round at the range. The range is essentially a giant open space and then at the front you'll see different little marked up spots. This is where you can pick a spot that is yours and you will just hit golf balls repeatedly. Ranges are not necessarily attached to a golf course. You could have just a golf range on its own somewhere, but generally golf courses will have a golf range on site. You might also wanna practice at the practice green. So this is just a green that is not part of any hole on the golf course. It is separate. It's generally close to the clubhouse. And this is where you can practice putting before the round. You can get a feel of how fast the greens are moving Moving today, what kind of grass you should expect. You can even practice chipping. Sometimes there will be a separate chipping green, sometimes it's all in one. Now that you've warmed up for your round of golf, you are ready to head out. First things first, before you head out, you might want to get yourself an electric golf cart or buggy. It's called different things in different parts of the world, but it is this electric little vehicle without the windows that you can drive yourself and one other person and your golf bags will be on the back and it makes your round a lot easier. If you want to walk the golf course or if the golf course allows you to walk, you can get a push cart. I have this Axglow push cart that works great, but any push cart will work for you and this will let you to not have to carry the bag on your back. If you like doing that, I mean, go for it, but personally, it's quite heavy for all 18 holes for me. On your way to the first tee, generally right next to the first tee box, you will see a person called the starter. This is going to be your final check-in before you start your round. This person has a list of all the different time slots and names so that he can ensure you are going on the golf course at the right time and also ensure that the groups ahead are moving at the right time slot and everyone behind is starting on time. All right, now that I've walked you through how to get on the golf course, let's talk about the different components of a golf course. Starting off with the first thing you will see, which is the tee box. The tee box is where you will hit your first golf shot on every single hole. There will be multiple tee boxes on every hole. These are called the tee decks. The reason we have multiple tee decks is because it makes all the golf holes a different length depending on your skill level. So generally you will see one that is furthest away from the pin from the flag stick, and that is where the most advanced golfers play. And then as you move down, this is for people that haven't played for as long or don't have as much yardage on their clubs. So you can't hit the ball as far, you might wanna move forward on the tee decks. That is why we have multiple tee decks. And then each tee box will have two markers. These markers will indicate, first off, what color they are, indicate which tee deck you're on. And this is where you will put the ball down and hit the ball. You have to put the ball down for your first shot, either between the tee markers or behind them. You cannot put the ball down in front of the tee markers. So that is the tee deck, tee box, 
and T markers. Now, looking forward from the T box, you will see the fairway. The fairway is where you want to be. This is where you will noticeably see the grass is the most mowed down, shortest grass, Usually it's pretty smooth. This is the best place to hit your shot into the green. So you want to be on the fairway. On either side of the fairway, you will generally see where the grass is a little longer. It hasn't been mowed down as much. That is what we call the rough. You don't necessarily want to be in the rough, but being in the rough is better than being outside of the rough, which is what we call out of bounds. I want to make a clarification on the term out of bounds because I wasn't super clear. Out of bounds is marked by white stakes and it's usually off the golf course properties. For a golf course where a lot of the golf holes are one after another, you can hit the ball way right or way left and it goes outside of the hole that you are playing, but it wouldn't be considered out of bounds. You just have to walk over there to the tree or to the next hole fairway and hit the ball back. So you can do that. The only time it's technically really out of bounds and you have to take a two stroke penalty is if you see white stakes, white wooden stakes on the side that is marking the border of the golf course. I hope that's a little more clear. Or there could be some bunkers. Bunkers are just little craters of sand on the golf course. Essentially, that's what it is. As a slang, sometimes people will say it's the beach, but the official term are bunkers or sand traps. Couple more golf course components. The next thing is the cart path. The cart path is usually a concrete or grassless path that goes up every single golf hole. It's very noticeable, you will see it. This is where you will drive your electric golf cart or buggy. Some courses will allow you to drive the buggy off the golf cart, but if it's cart path only that day, then you have to stay on the cart path. If your ball lands on the cart path, it is a free drop. So you don't get penalized for hitting your ball on the cart path because generally it's not out of bounds, it's just right next to the golf hole. Final thing on the golf course is the green. Think of the green as the final destination of every single golf hole. It's going to be a patch of grass that's mowed down with a flag stick and a hole. And the flag stick we will sometimes call the pin in golf. And those are the basic golf course terminologies you need to know. Let's move on to the next category, which is types of golf shots. First up is going to be a drive. I did make a video on golf course equipment, so I will not be mentioning all of the different equipments to you guys in this video, but make sure to check that out if you wanna know about all the different golf clubs you need. But let's get started with the types of golf shots. A drive is literally the shot you hit with your driver. So the biggest club in your bag, that is called the drive. The drive will also often be the tee shot. The tee shot is just the first shot you hit on every single hole from the tee box. That is your tee shot. Next up, we're gonna talk about layup. Unlike in basketball, a layup in golf is where you advance the ball forward within a safe distance. So imagine you've hit your tee shot, you're now standing on your second shot on the golf hole and there is a water pond in front of you that you don't think you can comfortably get over. So instead of doing nothing, you hit a shorter shot to the front of the pond so that you are now closer to the pond and your next shot will be easier. That is called a layup. All right, now that you are close to the green, let's talk about the different shots around the green. Starting off with a pitch. Pitch, different from a baseball pitch, is a shorter swing, higher lofted shot that you hit into the green, hopefully to within three feet of the hole. The shorter version of that is going to be a chip, which is a very small swing that you take. I did make this video on the best chipping lesson I had and I'm transferring that knowledge on to you guys. So go ahead and check that out. But chipping is usually right around the greens where you take a wedge or a nine iron that you want and you just hit a little stroke and the ball pops up a little bit into the air and rolls onto the green. Next up is going to be a bunker shot. Like we said before, bunkers are the sand traps and sometimes there is going to be little sand traps around the green and those are called green side bunkers and from those you will be hitting a green side bunker shot hopefully out of the sand trap and on to the green finally now that you have made it onto the green also called the dance floor this is where you will hit a putt so putting is where you use the flat golf club sometimes called the flat stick for that reason um, this is where you will hit a putt and the ball will just roll on the ground no air time that is a putt 
All right, let's talk about shot shapes. This will come in handy the next time you go to the range with your partner or with your friends, and now you can call them out on their shots. Let's talk about the shot shapes. Starting off with the straight shot, this is self-explanatory, it's a shot that goes straight. Next up, we're gonna talk about stinger. A stinger is a shot that takes off like an airplane, like an exponential graph and not a parabola. A normal shot will go up like this. A stinger will start low and come up. I personally don't know how to hit a stinger on purpose, um, so I can't give you tips on that, but it is something that a lot of people try to do to be cool. Now, if you are right-handed, everything I say is going to be for a right-handed person. If you're left-handed, it's going to be the opposite. If you are right-handed, a draw is a ball that starts straight and turns left. A pull is a ball that just starts left and continues left. <laughs> a hook is a ball that turns left very severely. But if you're right-handed and your ball goes slightly right, we call that a fade. And if your ball has a pretty big turn to the right, we call that a slice. This is a common problem across many people. Remember that one, because you'll see it a lot. <laughs> and finally, our favorite one is called a shank, and this is where the ball hits the connecting part between the shaft and the club face, and the ball shoots off like straight horizontally instead of forward. That is called a shank. Are you taking notes? Or you can just rewatch this video. We are moving on to our final category, scorekeeping in golf. We use some weird terminology, okay? It's almost as weird as tennis. But let's get started with the first term that you need to know, which is par. Par is the standard that you want to aim for. On every golf course, there will generally be three types of golf holes. Par threes, par fours, and par fives. Par threes means you, you should get from the tee box into the hole in three shots. Par four, four shots, par five, five shots. So naturally, par threes are the shortest, par fours are medium, and par fives are the longest holes. As a standard in golf, every hole you should have two putts. So if you think about it like this, a par three minus two putts, you should get on the green in one shot. Par fours, you should get on the green in two shots with two putts. And par fives, you should get on the green in three shots, two putts. Now, of course, you don't have to do this, but this, this is how the par system is set up. So if you add up the par for every single hole on the golf course, there are usually 18 holes on a golf course, it will generally come out to a par 71 to 73, with 72 being the standard. If the golf course has a shorter par, so par 70 or even in the 60s, it's probably an executive course or it's just a shorter golf course or it's a par three golf course. If the golf course has a higher par, so par 74, very rarely will it be more than that, then it's just a ridiculously long golf course. All right, so let's think of par as the standard. Then if you came in one over par, so on a par three, you had four strokes into the hole, then that is considered a bogey. Bogey is also a bird. The bird obsession starts here, I don't know why, okay? And then as we move higher away from par, so more shots to get into the hole, then we don't really have a specific word for that in English, so it's just bogey, and then we go to double bogey, which is two over, so if you had a five on a par three, triple bogey, if you are three over on a hole, and then we have the term double par for two times par. And for some golf courses, you can pick up after you've had double par, which means on a par three, if you've already taken six strokes and you're not in the hole yet, pick it up, count it as a six. If you're on a par five and you've taken 10 strokes and you're not on the hole yet, pick it up and count it as a 10. This is something, the double par rule is something I suggest to a lot of beginners because it is a good way to ensure that you're not holding up anyone else behind you. And also the hole just stops being fun for you when you've hit double par. Let's move on to the good side, which is ironically the negative side. So for golf, we keep score on par again, and you want to have the least amount of strokes into the hole. So if you've played well that day, you might have a few birdies. A birdie is where you hit one less than the par. So if it's a par three, and you got it into the hole in two shots, that's a birdie. An eagle is if you took two shots less than the par. Eagles are a lot more rare, and I don't know why we don't call it a double birdie, but <laughs> it is how it is. So we have birdie, one under, 
eagle two under and then albatross which is three under i have never had an albatross i have had eagles and i've never had a hole in one a hole in one on a par three is technically also an eagle because it is two under from three so three minus one two and i don't know what the word is for if you have a hole in one on a par five which would be four under if you do know make sure to comment it down below i've certainly never seen it I would love to see it. If you guys like find a clip on the internet of someone who got a hole in one on a par five, put it in the comments down below so we can all see it. I would love to see it. Um, but yeah, there have been lots of hole in ones on par fours, which is an albatross, but never on a par five. The final word I will share in today's video and with regards to your score in golf is handicap. I don't love this word. I don't know why we use it. Handicap is the difference between your average score on an average golf course to the par score. So for example, par 72 golf course, if on an average golf course, average score is an 82, then your handicap is a 10. So your handicap number is just how far your average score on an average golf course is from par. And there you have it, the basic golf terms you need to know. Remember to check out my golf equipments video and my golf basics playlist for all the videos you need to start golfing today. Make sure to share this video with your friends if you found it helpful. If you are new to golf and you have additional questions about anything golf related, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. I do read all the comments and think of me as your friendly neighborhood amateur golfer who has some experience and is able to explain it to you in the most basic way possible. A lot of my friends are entering their mid late 20s and have developed an addiction to golf. So I try a lot to explain it as simple as possible. And so yeah, if you find these videos helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you wanna see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe down below and I will see you in my next one. Bye.